No. Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to episode... We just recorded the previous one the two days ago. I've forgotten the session, session number already. Yay! What, is it 43? It, it's 40, I think it's 43. Something like that. I have firmly nailed the uh, bot, the wheel of the, I mean, down, so no one's going to nick it. However, lock it in place. I have a plan. This plan has been in place ever since the original uh, Saturday Isles group. I barely have anything to go with it. So let's, let's go and see how this turns out. Joining me is Sirot. Hello. Over there, admiring that uh, that calendar of a lady with black wings and a purple dress is Yelza. Omnis is going to have a great time. We have a J.K. Lantern. Gazon is here. Why is he here? At least gonna have ten minutes where they're just talking to one another. And I'm just gonna hate it. <laughs> oh, the fun of being the DM the DM and just having all the NPCs talk to one another. Or the party just watches and wondering why they're there. <laughs> and finally, but definitely not least, Star Princess HLC. Hope everyone liked the session I ran last time. This one should be interesting. The hearts of tacos. <laughs> it was an interesting session indeed, and set, and so much potential setup. Yep. <laughs> it has been a week since the party returned from Frontier. It turned out the usual problem of there was no teleport circles set. Set up on Frontier to return to uh, the guild. So, well, it's been a week. Been a week on a leisurely cruise on one of the cargo ships. That Granville managed to find find to get you back back home. And well, you managed to have some correspondence for the guild. And at least for Fenwick and have you, has Fenwick been actively researching the map, map of the sites and the eye and all that fun stuff? Yes, he has. He has been corresponding with someone in the guild, and the conclusion they came up with is the map not only being Vixie, was it? Yes. They have been the location of Vixie's bases. The bases are situated on uh, locations of power dotted around the Saturdales, places where once upon a time the ley lines crossed. Oh, that's the assume, assumed with a calculator and tore the planet apart. The belief is some of those ley lines are still active, not in the colours on the bases. And the ones marked in red are the ones where the Leylands are dead or moved or all that fun stuff. As for the uh, as for the eye, it seems it seems like every time you give it give it a shake, you seem to be getting someone else. You, you get this wizardly sounding guy who's asking for orders. Someone. So, ah, Saruman the Stinky. Sorry, cut out, boy. Will you clear off? I needed an army of enhanced orcs, so piss off. And then you get someone by the name of. Uh... You, you never catch the first half of the name, it's something dog. Something about bringing funky tunes to the wastelands. It, it, it seems to go through, through a number of frequencies. 
you can usually tell because your thing blinks when that happens. And uh, for Chief Boss, when you get back, well, Doris pretty much hits you with, with your mail. It's the same same old stuff. So for so one letter, you know how it's basically come from Dane. Or rather more Dane's boss. Mm -hmm. It comes down to, they really want the Spirit Talker back. So if you manage to recover their soul, they're willing to exchange their soul for the soul of your cousin, along with any notes that the Soul Taker had been making along the time. Hmm. And just to prove their goodwill, they have already sent a few pages of notes that basically come down to your Helga was confronting your father on issues of apparently he was passing something off as being directly related to the family that he was there doing entirely but it wasn't And as for the likes of uh, Shirino Yuki, I imagine just spending time together and Shirino just getting his time getting drunk, drinking the the ship's limited supplies of alcohol. And probably he, like, uh, gave Yuki the heads up of what happened. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Yuki's not even there. It'd be the case of yeah, some correspondence be going on between you two as well. Yeah, Yuki was busy uh, helping Okasan through his soaps because something traumatic happened during it. The the uh, the analyst satchel had to go to someone else. So it's a case of that's how everyone's been talking. <clears throat> okay. Hamrick has taken over Yuki's position as Okasan's soap. Person. <laughs> the problem is when someone actually thinks it revolves around soap as opposed, as opposed to soap <laughs> offers. Mm. Exactly. So finally, the party arrives back, back at the guild, driving by stagecoach, by tram, then by stagecoach. Then and the royal bus. Then have to walk a little because apparently Chief was kicked, kicked out Fenris for some smart out comment. And they missed their spot. He would never. <laughs> Fenric is an upstanding member of society. <laughs> Yuki comes to with focus on to greet them at the gate. <laughs> So yeah, everyone's united back at the gate. There they are. Hello. Ah, there you. Oh no, you have the mongrel with you. I had Orca to get him up for air at some point. Orcason has been marathoning. He has. Has he just been staring into a bucket this whole time? Yes. <laughs> Why? Okazan is catching up <laughs> on his stories, he is. On the right side, the bean in the bucket has been growing pretty good. It's but it's just hang some kind of pod and it's been going, feed me. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> uh, How'd the mission go? Oh, uh, we we are going. We did find the children. We uh, also uh, may have found something of interest to you. Also, 
We we found a friend over here. Hi. I'm you. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. The tall, scary ones won't stop talking about you. <laughs> what? Why do you have a tail? Uh, long story. I'm uh, sure I'll hear about it uh, in due time. Indeed. Shifros pulls out the staff he stole off of Vixie and offers it to Yuki going, I took this from someone you might know. Uh, she takes it. How? Wait, so... You met someone I should know? Maybe. Is that better in your hands than mine? I mean, this is this is who I think it is. She has spares. <laughs> uh, I'm she pretty is sure it's now. I'm pretty sure it's exactly who you think it is. So, so, so what exactly happened? It seems like, um, it seems like this is something that would be much better discussed in complete privacy. Good yes. Plan. Okay. It's also, uh, also certainly at that point, Dallas, Dolores. Whatever is going by at the moment just materializes almost behind Yuki and Okasan. Hello, there. Is this another friend who's joining the guild? Oh yes, right. Uh, I am here for research purposes. Okay, if you shall follow me, we shall get you inducted. To set you. Set your beauty accounts, uh, discuss your fees. Fees, and we'll bring you up to details on all the terms and conditions. Don't we? I have slides. Oh, very good, very good. You don't see him for at least another two hours. Yep. Well, I guess that's a good enough time for the group to, like, go into one of the various rooms and talk about what happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Omnia shows up towards the tail end of this because he doesn't deserve to know what's happening. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> he finally wakes up. He sees Okosan and Sai in the same room. Oh, oh God. So, wants to go back to watching his soaps. I mean, you you go ahead. I'll catch up. Focus on enjoying his stories. <laughs> Obvious to Yuki. Please don't make me stay here with him. Pretty please. Obvious. You you need to understand the. The intricacies of true entertainment. Come! You must watch Okasan's soaps with him. It's at the point that creepy guy from Admin, the one with the wide smile, reappears. The one that sent you up to the chair from the Endless Market. Oh, hello there, good sir. Are you happy with your arrangements, or can we help you find another... another a location for you to reside in during your time in the guild. Omnius considers, on the one hand, Uncle Son doesn't make him pay rent. 
on the other hand, he hates Okosan. So uh, he he's uh, going to say, nope, he's fine. I'm fine. Everything's but, fine. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's fine. That's fine. We just, we just have a, a, a small location that's idea for a poor solo person to stay in your current situation. That still needs to prioritize where their money goes. Hmm. Giving you more than a knowing wink. And this is like, I'll think about it. You know where to find us. And then they just, with a hop and a skip, on the way back to the admin department. Dear God, is <laughs> case I seem to give in all my uh, playable. Playable cards are some form of PTSD, and for the NPCs that remain NPCs, they're all fucking deranged. <laughs> Yugi just slips Omnius like a few gold coins. Here, I'll give you this if you can just keep Okasan entertained for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he just takes them. All right, Oko-san, let's go look at the soaps. His greatest weakness. <laughs> you pay him enough gold, he'll do basically anything. <laughs> hey, Ominous, give us a, a perception check, please. I don't have my dice ready. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, I'm asking for rolls already. Yeah. <laughs> I live in a fear. That would be a nineteen. For some reason you feel urged to turn around. You crank your head back, peering over your shoulder, and you see the keg golem just peering down the corner. He grabs Okosan. Okay, Okosan, let's go. <laughs> Just this moment, he grabs Okosan, holds him above his head, and legs it. <laughs> so he gets to share his soaps. <laughs> Close his door gently. So, safe to assume you ran into some old acquaintances of mine. They were turning children and goblins into foxes. You asked why new member had tail. They are why. Ah. Uh, do they, do they show how that happened? Is there a possible way to switch it back? And none if there is way to to switch it back, but there was room. There was room in the uh, pyramid of sorts where magic was performed that turned that turned the goblins into wolfen. This was on Stracus. Kind of. I mean, there was a jungle right next to Strakus where they hid Temple. Huh. Now I'm wondering if there's a temple near where my family's old mansion was, because I wasn't that far from there when turned, as far as I remember. Kipper and Waverly also send their regards. Oh, glad to see that they're doing well. They were not. They were less than pleased with how Vixie is running things, and Embry is looking for you. Embry, I had a feeling he'd go looking for me, but the fact that. It's been gone so long that Vixie took control is concerning. 
According to them, it has been years. I've been gone for years. It makes sense. Still, this doesn't bode well. Fix, he's causing this much problems. I wonder who it was that that paid her off to steal the kids from Granville. On a minor note, were there a lot of bananas where you grew up? No. Mm. This place has a lot of bananas. Mm, bananas. Yeah, so at this point in time, he just walks by eating a bunch of bananas. This on his way back to buy some letters. Put pulls a banana out for Yuki. Ooh, tree sausage. Um, yum, 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 yum. Somewhere the desert gnomes are screaming. Huh. But now I I grew up in a forest on the Isle of New Chester. I was thinking maybe they managed to transplant old home in new area. Mm, but if possible. no bananas, then not likely. Mm. Like I said, we had a lot of cheese. Do not think you ran into a cheese making facility. I, I don't recall seeing any. Mental note to self, make cheese wizard. <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> You're only going to cheddar someone off. This. But they'd be cheese to meet you. This. It will be a very brief lifespan. You won't, <laughs> you won't be the queen of the crop. What? You don't want to meet the big cheese? Eat them, I don't. Uh, Alright, that's enough cheese buns. I do get the feeling Lady Kiki is, gra is glaring somewhere. Recently I've had that feeling a lot for different reasons. <laughs> In other news, we did get an invite for a beach day. Ooh, beach! Yes, at this point, one of the uh, guild status passes by, so gives Chifos a, a note and is on their way. They're not meeting, just by, by specifying, you are on a certified holiday for tomorrow. Please stay in the guild for it has been arranged by a visiting noble. You know who. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of beach, here's official note. An official note? Was it signed by a fish? It depends what you call Doris. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, Ominous finds himself assigned to almost worse accommodations. Darn. He ends up rooming with the with the keg golem. <laughs> he ends up in the office in the office with a guy called Fenton. He'd rather live with Alcosan than the keg golem. The eternal <laughs> search for the stapler. <laughs> Oh, took my staples. I had a poor lot in here, and someone used two staples. Who used them? I'm just pointing directly at Opalzon. Have you seen my stapler? He was <laughs> a red swing line stapler. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, did you get the thing I sent? Son got many things that have been sent. And then he filed them properly. Then I'm thinking he actually does the file things properly. The, actually, so where are it? Go ahead. The, actually, was an item turned in from Lost and Found. A strange silver box with dreams written in Elvis on the side. It got filed under L for Lost and Found. I'm done. So where exactly is the beach party supposed to be? Note did not say. I assume yeah. we will meet our esteemed guest and be taken to it. You know, that's fair. I'm going to have to pick out bathing suits. I didn't know you had bathing suits. Well, I mean, of course, I can't go naked, can I? Hmm. Unless it's a nude beach. That might just kill Omnius outright. It'd probably kill Sai outright, too. <laughs> Emma stuck up on sunscreen. In the meantime, Omnius is shirking his duties off to Fenric. <laughs> All right, you stay here with the weird bird, and uh, I'll talk to you later. I, I say, old chap, uh, what, what, what do you want me to do? Oh, I see we have wear anteater. Don't worry, wear anteater. You can watch Okasan soap, sweet Okasan. You know what? Fenric probably finds Okosan fascinating. <laughs> I must So do him. most people in the psychological field. <laughs> <laughs> I must study this bird. <laughs> More or less, his immediate thought was, this bird is fascinating. I must study him. <laughs> oh god, he is somehow tied to Walter. As I said, they're, maybe they're cousins. <laughs> His name is actually Fenric Coppertai. <laughs> so, anything folks want to do, or shall we skip ahead to the next day? Might as well skip ahead. Okay, we skip ahead. The next day comes. There's a booster crying out. Crying out, and it results in a boot to be thrown at the goddamn gallows. Gallows that's uh, on the roof. I say, I say, boy. All I'm trying to do is do my do my duty. I ain't the physical alarm clock around here. Do you hear me, boy? Do you hear me? Speak up, boy. Speak up, boy. Today's lunch fried chicken. <laughs> oh, my chicken! You go around the canteen per usual, catching up with any recent mail, which turns out there's not a lot of it. It's not, well, not of, uh, most of you, but there are bits and pieces again for Tedlin, mostly rejections about the box. And despite you haven't seen him for a fair old while, but it does seem he's still sending out the letters about the box. Omnius gets another letter from his mom asking him to drink more soup. So he's ma making sure you're sleeping in regular hours, getting good food, and have you seen any good, good, good girls that of uh, that of suitable wedding or marriage age? He's not going to write about it, but the answer to that is yes. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh man, the age difference is way too big. He doesn't know that. And after being woken up by the rooster, Shifros did indeed go to the kitchen and prepared a bunch of fried chicken for lunch. Yuki was first in line. <laughs> well, he's taking it with him to the beach, so. Uh, so Yuki's just drooling as she's walking behind him. <laughs> so, while well, well, you're in the can canteen, you see the arrival of one smartly dra dressed in a suit, hobgoblin. For those who attended the wedding, wedding on the, between the Snarks and the uh, Sleepwells, you will remember Jeeves. He comes up to you, hands behind his back. Ladies, gentlemen, and uh, all identifying. Hello, Jeeves. Gre greetings, Jeeves. Good to see you again. Hello. It is a thing to see you again, and... Um, her ladyship had arrived not too long ago and he's set it up in one of your spare rooms. And I'm here to collect you to make sure you get to where we need to be. Is there uh, anything you need to know before we are on our way? Arnis is too busy preening himself to make himself look nicer. Is there cover from sun available, or do we need to bring on? Uh, don't worry, sir. All shall be provided. Fair enough. Um, nothing else? He leads the way. Normally, it takes you lots let's say at least half hour to to a few heading around the place usually for the teleport rooms but jeez it's like this place is second nature to him it takes you five minutes to lead you to one of the old research rooms on the lower on the lower floors that's been uh, cleaned out and made presentable around the, cent the central one of the desks Daddy Kiki is sat, sat there, cup, a cup of tea in her hand. Hand with her. Uh, lads! Lads, a blue, deep blue, leather bound book on the desk before her. Ah! It is good to see you again. The pleasure is all ours, so I can keep you. Is there anything you need? I can get you whatever you need. Are you blushing at this moment? Arnius is. Well, birds can't really blush, but if he could. I mean, black feathers, so hard to tell. Yeah. yeah. He just. Smirks at you, knowing, especially if you remember what you were like last time, and just gives you a wink. The nosebleed has begun. Question Has Okasan actually been pursuing the agenda of, in any regard, that Lady Kiki is somehow? Lord Puddy. He, he has a cork board in the cage with a lot of strings and a lot of pictures. Lady Kiki is on there somewhere. 
connected to a pudding with a question mark. There, there is also a cat on there for some reason. And some giant mechanical thing. Uh, that could be damn you anything. I'm I'm sure it makes sense to Okasan. <laughs> it, it it absolutely makes perfect sense to Okasan. Um, in, in addition to that, the uh, name Juro appears on it no less than seven times. Spelled differently every time. <laughs> At least once he spelled gerbil. Happy hamsters have to happen. Hmm. And the gerbil has a string tied to it. String leads to another one reading French Revolution? Question mark. <laughs> yes. Lady Kiki puts, it, puts aside a cup of tea, rises up from her seat, and gives everyone either a hug or a tap on the shoulder. Ominous, you get a tap on the shoulder. He feels nothing but pain. <laughs> She returns, returns to the table, picking up the book, and opposite, lady down the table again for everyone to see because he's on a little stand. If uh, everyone would kindly please uh, lay one hand upon the book. All right. But Stands directly next to Lady Kiki for this. She probably very carefully lays a hand on the book. The moment you lay a hand upon the book, what? It's like going for the teleportation circles. Only this time, there's no old grandmas in rocking chairs or strange celestial beasties that's flying around the place. No theme tunes, no uh, rocking out to uh, rock, rock tunes that would go way too fast. Before before you know it, you deposit it on a beach. It's a familiar looking beach. Because this, for those, those who are there, this is where you ended up before you saved the 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 worm from the uh, lake, the lake worm, yeah. <laughs> the lake the lake worm from uh, all the blood blood claw. So the only ones who would recognize it would be Shifros and Okasan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh yes, this is the beach. It is. The talking shark yes. pops, out, pops, pops its head out of the water again. Oh, fuck, you're back. No, no, shark. Okay. It, it's. Amis is like, yes, this beaches tend to look like this. It's just that. Um, it feels like it's the same beach, and yet, same time, it doesn't. <laughs> it spreads further. The water. You can see the waves coming and going with more strength than what you saw before. It goes as far as the eye can see, and you get the feeling it goes far beyond it. And come floating down, not in her usual purple gown, but rather in a, uh, a pretty scandalous looking bathing suit because he well since the whole setting is 1920s england for the whole steampunk thing case of it won't really be that much scan scandalous bathing suit these days but case of it's uh she's got a lot of like on display bare arms bare bare up top 
a pair of uh, sim simple uh, beat shoes. And uh, basket has somehow appeared in under her arm. And her glasses have changed from her regular things to circular sun, sun shaded sunglasses. And you lot too have found your attire has been changed as well. Ooh. So, what have you been changed into? Chip Ross is in trunks, flip flops, and a towel over his shoulders. It's always good to know where your towel is. Yep. He realizes this and immediately starts applying all the sunscreen he can. <laughs> I, I think Sai is in like he he has a he has the hat, but he also is wearing like one of those nineteen twenties bathing suits. O Okasan, however. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I, I just had this idea. <laughs> I I I, I I'm thinking of something that could be funny for Okasan specifically. But Okasan is in like 1950s sci-fi movie diving suit. Is this the one with the, with the diving bell? Diving bell helmet? Well, like, the, the the big round helmet, it's just, like, big, bulky, with, with, like, the big oxygen. He's basically in something like a crappy space suit. <laughs> only for diving. Omnius. <laughs> Okasan is now Scuba Steve. He's literally wearing the portable diving bell suit. <laughs> Let me see if I can find like a good example of the <laughs> kind of thing I'm looking for. Not that. Not that. It just sounds <laughs> like he's turning to a big daddy. Here we go. <laughs> Something like this. Only slightly more bird shaped. <laughs> He's a pear shaped big daddy. <laughs> uh, you keep has something a little similar to this, <laughs> just with it a with uh, it actually being a one piece instead. Uh, so also not I am not saying these. Not adding these to the recording footage, so you don't don't know. You just have to use your imagination. Yeah, just imagine that the top is very frilly looking and it's blue. And you there, you in the back, take a cold shower. <laughs> Omnius is. Hmm. Yeah, he's just in trunks. Very purple trunks. With pink polka dots. Yeah, one of us looks undignified. <laughs> yes, one of us does. <laughs> Are you off to fight Ocean again? Okasan must explore the depths to understand his enemy. Suddenly, Okasan starts speaking with a French accent. Oh no, it's Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> we must see uh, what is exists in the deep depths. We must. For the <laughs> sake of the one true pudding. For the sake of those who are not wearing a diving helmet. <laughs> you, you had a sense of the scent of the salt water in the air back in the day. For the two that did arrive there. That was nothing compared to this. It's like you just stepped out from from fresh air to it the scent scent of salt water in the air just hits you. 
Well, like a wet towel, really. It's not unpleasant, it's different. But it's the thing of. I said before, this place is very familiar and at the same time very different. Hmm. I wonder. Yuki pulls out the whistle and blows it. At this, suddenly, well, not really sunny, give, give it a few minutes. Well, Lady Kiki basically explained that. This place is a snapshot of the world before the Cataclysm. She has a series of books that basically act as a reservoir of memories. When finally... Okay, you, you bugger for me to look at things. <laughs> There's a new tab. When this surfaces out the water. Oh, good, that is back. It doesn't look like the one that I summoned last time. Obvious is understandably terrified, but uh, doesn't want to show it. I think it grew since last time. Is it another dance show? Lady Kiki also explains that this is a snapshot from well, this is from before the cataclysm, so it's a long, long ago. She also remarks that uh, they had to summon a sea dragon that apparently once upon a time did reside on New Chester, but no more. She, she walks up to the edge of the beach, the waves just washing over her feet as he call, calls the dragon down. He leans down to her as he whispers into his ear. He just narrows his eyes and looks towards you, you lot. Before he turns and just causing a small wave as he just crashes back into the water. As you can see, it's it's uh, wings that flay that come out like great sails. Just seems to. As it seems to just fly under the water and just disappears from sight. Ugh. Please don't do that again. This place may be okay. this place resets after every visit, but it's um some of the thing thing some of the memories captured here can be quite temperamental. That that's fair. Plus, my, my curiosity was sated anyway. <laughs> and, um, a bit sunny on this up, I think I'll call this the end to part one. It's a bit of a de decent closure for the opening acts. So, uh, catch you in part two, folks. Later. Bye. Take care, everyone. And stop blowing. Yeah. And stop blowing whistles that summon sea drakes and dragons. Never. Hey, the folks. <laughs>